So welcoming in Scott Shepard. He's the director of the National Center's Free Enterprise Project. Scott, so good to have you here. Oh, wonderful to be with you, Stacey. I always look forward to our conversations because you are a boardroom warrior. You go in and you say the things all of us want to say, but we just, we're, we're at work. We don't have time to go. And you actually do this for your living. So first off, tell us about the Free Enterprise Institute at National Center for Public Policy Research. People might not be aware of what you do there. Sure. We're, we're the Free Enterprise Project. We're FEP. And what we do, and we've done for 15 years now, is to... Uh, be shareholder activists from the center right. You know, there's a, a group of 120 organizations on the left that have been pushing corporations to the left for 40 years. And we were slow in the game on the right. And for a long time, our organization, FEP, was the only one uh, fighting on our side because we couldn't get conservatives and even moderates to understand that um, that corporate executives had changed sides. You know, the, everybody just assumed in the Reagan era that they were solid Republicans and you could you could count on. Them. Well, uh, particularly after the Zuccotti Park and Eat the Rich and all of that in 2010, they decided, well, maybe if we make a deal with the lefties and they take everybody else's money and everybody else's liberty, they'll let us keep ours. And so this has been a a, a terrible collusion between uh, large private companies and and left wing administrations. And, and we've seen that in so many ways in recent years, uh, the opposing election integrity, uh, the, the tech companies um, censoring conservative speech, and, and of course, the, the catastrophic blowups at uh, Bud Light and Target and Disney for just going whole in on extreme lunatic partisan uh, left-wing positions. So you are doing this on behalf of shareholders who used to expect before this new modern era, they used to expect that the CEO and everyone who works at the company would be working to increase shareholder value. And now they actually sub subjugate shareholder value to ESG norms and uh, priorities. So they, they actually say, if we have an ESG policy we're implementing and it, re it results in reduced shareholder value, we will still implement that ESG paradigm because the company could lose money in this process, but it's for the greater good, Scott. Well, for a long time, they pretended that their, their phrase was doing well by doing good. In other words, you'll make a lot of scratch. You'll make more money if we do just these lovely things that everybody agrees are good ideas, like saving the environment and, and you know helping, helping uh, everybody to advance. But the way it's worked out is what they really mean is shifting to uh, energy sources that are unreliable, you know, green energy sources. They're not reliable. They're not economically feasible. And, and the techno technologically, they just can't be done yet. And so uh, it turns out that moving from reliable and affordable energy to unreliable, unproven, and unaffordable energy is a terrible business idea. And so we, we on our side have, have proven that. And so their, their excuses have, have largely gone away. Um, and, and on other grounds, it turns out, as Target discovered, that by giving $50 million to organizations that train teachers to create gender confusion in small students and then help those students to hide from their parents the gender confusion, that, you know, when, you're, uh, when your main customers are middle class moms, that, that turns out to be a bad idea for your business. And so we've exploded the idea that, that doing left ESG supports companies. We've shown them ways in which it's going to get them sued. And, and what we're seeing is at least a rhetorical withdrawal at most companies from these excesses. And you know we're going to keep the heat up to make sure that those are real withdrawals. There are a couple of companies that are outliers and just want to go down with the ESG ship, but, but most of them are at least rethinking. So that brings us to Disney. Um, they've been in the news a lot, and their very public fight that they had with Governor DeSantis, where they were expected to prevail as the, you know, they were the they were the white knight. They were going to prevail over evil, racist Governor DeSantis. And now the resolution of that court case is that they they really they've lost on every side because parents, I think, weren't as aware. They they just take their kids to Disney. They let their kids watch the movies. They weren't as aware of Disney's stance on the LGBTQ you know, all of the different letters um, and, and how much they promote that. And so there's there's this big disconnect between their customers and what they actually promote. 
So they're still in trouble. Tell us, tell us what's going on there. Oh, Disney's in terrible trouble. Run by Bob Iger, who wanted to run for president, who wanted to go down in history as one of the great, um, uh, the great CEOs as a Jack Welsh. He's going to go down in history as the anti-Jack Welsh because he hired, if, if you're a South Park watcher, uh, he hired Kathleen Kennedy, Kathleen Kennedy, who, who uh, she took over at Lucasfilms and she, she had a, a power throughout the company. And her explicit goal was to give uh, viewers not what they wanted, not what they got from Disney for decades, which was stuff they could park their kids in front of and the kids would be safe. She, no, 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 no uh, strong male figures in comic books uh, series anymore or in Star Wars. Uh, nobody. Uh, no, no, only strong women. And because you you had women who couldn't do wrong, you didn't have any story arc because the story arc is learning and having having uh, problems and then succeeding. But you can't have that if all of your women are strong and all your men are, are useless. So they, they're making terrible products. They're losing hundreds of millions of dollars on pretty much everything they put out. And they've ticked off three quarters of the country who as it turns out, would quite like to be involved in their children's lives and not have them confused for life by the lunacy that, that so many uh, primary education teachers were, were teaching. And you know, Scott, for our part, and this is purely anecdotal, but I do believe my son is a representation. He's a young adult now. When I remember us being on radio talking, you and I, and he was still in middle school. So we've known each other a long time. And he, now he's a, an adult living in an apartment on his own, working a job. He's done with college. And he hates Kathleen Kennedy's work with a passion, not the person, her work. She has destroyed the Star Wars franchise for him. And for so many of us who it's not about sexism, it's you, you, you so perfectly elucidated that you should clip that out and send her an email with an MP4 of just that one statement you made, which is without a problem, there is no story. So even if the character's a woman and that there's no problem with the main character being a woman, oh, no. that woman has to have a flaw, right? She has to have a problem. So I think the, the, the deal here is when someone shows that they're not good at something, you replace them with someone who is good at it. And I have to say, that's not your problem. You're really great at confronting these CEOs and these shareholder meetings and bringing the truth to light and also putting a lot of that in front of other people who aren't aware of what's going on. I really believe the evolution at these corporations is due in no small part to Free Enterprise Project. Thank you, Scott Shepard. For joining Thank the National you, Center for Public Policy Research. You're fantastic. Talk to Anytime. you again soon. Thank you. All right. We'll have more now for you coming up next.